able to see them. We're still going to get plants. Or you can get somebody that went to 10 years of college, the plant's still going to grow. Same seed, right? So we, we have to remember that it's not about us. We are doing what God called us to do. You know, hopefully we're going above and beyond, but even at going above and beyond, we're still doing the work that God called us Amen. to do. It's not like, oh, look what I did, God. It's not about that. Okay. okay. So that takes care of 10 and 11. Now, 12. Now we're going to get into a little Jewish stuff here. Uh, 12 is Deuteronomy 6, 8. And 13 is also Deuteronomy 6, 8. It says, Bind the law on our hands, bind, bind or write the law upon, excuse me, our minds. So this is what it says. 6, 8. It says, And you shall bind them as a sign, speaking about the law, bind them as a sign on your head, and they shall be as frontlets for your eyes. I'm sorry, I said head and it was hand. Anyway, in the Jewish culture, in Orthodox Jews, I'm, I'm sure you've seen it somewhere, they have this little black box, it's very tiny, and they wrap it right around their head like that. They tie it. Inside of that box it has scripture. Then they get a, it looks like a belt, but it's real fine, and it's also, it's leather, it's black, they wrap it around their hand, and they tie it around their arm, and it's, and they try to tie it. <laughs> and they do that to remind them of the law. That, that's the purpose of it, to remind them of the law. Now, that's not what the scripture says. You know what I mean? Like, like we have to be careful because we tend to, as men, yeah, we tend to say, well, this is what the word says, so this is what I'm going to do. And it's like far from it. Yeah. Now, spiritually, we put the law in our minds. And our head means mind. So we read this word and we, we think about it. We, we start to, you know, everything in there should start turning. We should be thinking about the word. And that's how we think about it daily, right? We read something, and let's say that I read in the morning, and then I go to work. I'm thinking about what I read. I'm like, oh, what did it mean? You know, there's just one part I didn't understand. And Joe knows I call him sometimes. I'm like, brother, I read this. What does it mean? I don't get it because it, it burdens me to know. You know, like I have to know. You know, and, and sometimes I'm just going through my day, and God reminds me about something that I read. And he's like, look what you're doing. This is what it means. Like, he shows me. Yeah. And it's awesome. And that's what it means to put the law in our minds. And then uh, it says, uh, yeah, that's, that's what it means where it says to put it on our front lips between our eyes, which is our mind, okay? Then to bind it on our hands, if we bind the law on our hands, are we going to be doing sin? No. If the law says don't do this, then our hands is what does the action, right? Mm -hmm. We're not going to do it. So we bind the law on our hands. In other words, we obey it, we keep it, we do it, okay? It's not about tying a leather strap around it, okay? If you want to do it, do it, but it's not about that. <laughs> Understand what it means. Yeah. In other words, brother, if we know the word of God, mm -hmm. then we won't be breaking this law and doing things we're not supposed to. That's right. I, I speak to a lot of people, and here just yesterday I was talking to one of the substitutes that was living in sin. You know? And, and I told her, I said, do you realize that that is a sin, that one of the commandments? She said, well, you know what? I, I, think, I think that we need to get married. You know, but you know, they, people are ignorant. They don't because they don't know the law. Their hands are doing yeah. contrary to the law. Yeah, exactly. And and the sad thing is that nobody's warning. Amen. Yeah, because they're afraid. Yeah. You know, because there is a scripture that says, "Stay out of other people's business." Mm -hmm. But it means don't meddle in their affairs. Don't don't meddle in such a point that you tell them, "Don't do this. Do that. Do this. Yeah. Don't do that. Mm -hmm. You did this wrong. That's the meddling." Yeah, now, but to good. tell them about. The things are doing wrong to lead them to the Lord. That's not biblical. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Warning. Yeah. And, and as Christians, we should accept the warnings. You know what I mean? That's right. And 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 not to say that, like, let's say I warn you about something, I could be wrong too. Go and look it up in the scripture. And you know what? Brother was right, or brother was wrong. You misinterpreted. Mm -hmm. Let me go and tell him. You know. And that's how we are. That's how we speak to each other. You know. That's what it should be. Mm -hmm. You know. We don't get offended and oh, I don't want to hear you. You know. We, we don't do that because once again, it's not about us. It's about him. And all of us are learning, and, and that's one of the things I love about this place is we're going to teach each other the way He teaches us. We'll be able because there's things I know that you don't know, and there's things you know that I don't know, and that's how we learn. And and unfortunately, you know, this morning when I was getting ready to come, my wife asked me. Uh, she goes, "Are you nervous?" And I go, "Yes, I'm always nervous. Every, everywhere I've ever spoken, my my knees shake. I, I get nervous. You know, and I've been doing this for so many years. You would think I would get over it, but I'm not. I get nervous." But even more here, because I know I'm speaking with people that know, you know? I'm not speaking to people that don't know. I'm not going to go over your head. But then, on my drive over here, as I was praying, the Lord spoke to me, there's things that you know that they don't know, and you need to speak it. Because sometimes we think that, you know, like a lot
lot of people that know you, brother, they always tell me, oh, Joel knows everything. I don't know why you even bother with him. And, and sometimes you think that way, right? But that's not true. I mean, I, I just remember when we went to that church, and, and we, I remember you saying, wow, you said something I didn't know. And I, I remember I was like, you didn't know? Like, what? <laughs> you know, but, but it's true because we are all children. We have to humble ourselves before our master and our king, right? right? And, and as he teaches us things, then we will go on, you know? Together. Praise God. Like, it's like this morning, I always talk to this, this man, and he brings scripture and everything that God never said to worship him and everything, and he goes through the internet a lot. And I've heard Joe say logic, but I remember, you know, sometimes we don't remember this. You know what? I said, I've heard the word L O D I C. And I said, You don't know what it means? I said, No. You know, I, I wasn't prideful. I said, No. I've talked to Joe a lot, and I've heard him. So he started to explain to me, but. That's how you, you learn. You don't say, just tell them stuff about God. But when he says something, I listen and say, well, I don't know the meaning. I admit, you know. And that's what's good about it. That you, you know, I, I don't know everything. Yeah. But sometimes I might hear it, and then I forget. Yeah. But I, I don't know, I've heard it before, but I forgot. Yeah. You know, tell me what it means. Yeah. And there's times, too, that you know, myself in, in Bible studies that I have with other people, you know, sometimes I doubt myself because they say something and they give me a scripture to back it up, and then because we're supposed to be humble, right? Because I humble myself, and I'm like, you know what? Maybe I'm wrong on that issue. Maybe I don't know. And, and I can't give an answer or a satisfactory answer right there and then. So I usually tell them, I want to study it. I want to look it up on my own. Or if they don't know the scripture, I tell them, give me the scripture. Send it to me. You know, email it, whatever. Yeah. Send it to me so I can study it. And then I do, and sometimes I still doubt myself because... When I study, I, I don't know if it's because of the way I was brought up or what, but when I study the Word, I always, uh, I look at it through what other people might think. You know what I mean? Like like when I do a lesson, and not in this case because I, I wasn't worried, <laughs> but most lessons I do, I try to think of all the questions that would come up in opposition, mm -hmm. all the scriptures that seem to oppose the topic that I'm teaching on, right? And then I get the answer so that I can be ready to answer, right? Because that's what we're supposed to do, right? The scripture said we're supposed to be ready to get an answer. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that, that's what well, I do personally. That's something the Lord does, brother, to keep us humble. Because I go through the same thing. When I'm teaching and somebody comes against, I go home and I study the whole thing over again and say, did I misinterpret? Did I, you know, do it wrong? And as I go through the study again and I study what they said, I reach the truth, you know, but but I believe that God does that to keep us humble always, that, hey, you don't know everything, you might be wrong. Praise God for that. Amen. Okay, uh, verse 14 is going to explain what I'm wearing. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, number 14. It says, make zitzit on the corners of your tattis. That's Numbers 15, 38 and 40. Numbers 15, 38 and 40. You know, I praise God for my wife because she's already began to accept me in many of the things that I do and I say. But at first it was not so because she was like, why are you so hard? Why do you, you, know, why do, you do this? If she would think that I was looking for a fight. And I'm not. I hate fighting. I hate fighting more. But, uh, but I do love to contend for the faith, right? I'm sorry. I'm hard of hearing. What was that scripture? Oh, it's uh, 15, 15, 15, 30, yeah, numbers 15. Numbers 15. Oh, numbers. Okay. 38 through 40. Anyway, when I uh, purchased this, this is a zip sit, and this is the undergarment. I'm sorry. This is it. This is the undergarment. This is worn by priests. This is worn by kings and priests. What does that remind you of? Revelation. We're all kings and priests. Amen. Mm -hmm. Every time that I go and teach somewhere, if I know that I'm going to teach, sometimes I don't know. I just go and they're like, oh, we're going to teach you. We teach. Okay. <laughs> But every time I know I'm going to teach, I always at least wear the undergarment because I feel that I'm I'm stepping into the priestly role, okay? The zitzit, not so much. But today I wore it because, and we call it the prayer shawl, right? But it's a zitzit in Hebrew. The reason I wore it is because I knew, I hoped that we were going to get this far so that I could show you what it means. Anyway, it says, uh, make zitzit on the corners of your tabbies. Numbers 15, 38 through 40. This is what it says. Speak to the children of Israel. And you shall say to them, Make zitzit on the corners of their garments throughout their generations, and to put a blue cord in the zitzit on the corners. 
And it shall be uh, to the no, I'm sorry. And it shall be to you for a good sit, and you shall see it, and you shall remember all the commands of Yahweh, and I shall do them, and not search after you. I'm sorry. <laughs> And not search after your own heart and your own eyes, which you, which you went pouring, which deals with that word that brother said earlier about profane. So that you remember, and you shall do all my commands, and be set apart uh, unto your Elohim. So basically, what it's saying here is to make these knots here. Okay? And there, you notice there's knots here, and there's knots here. Once again, this is the priestly, this is the, the what everybody wears, okay? Anyway, the priestly 